So we're going to keep going on the series that we started several weeks ago, and we've got a few more weeks in it, and that's standing firm. And what it means to stand firm, if you remember the first few, we came out of the Old Testament, we looked at some prophets and, and what they did through the strength of Christ, through the strength of, of God. Today we're going to transition, though, we're, we're moving up more contemporary, if you will. We're going to the New Testament today. We're going to see some words that Paul has encouraged us with um, that's really helped me, because I'll be honest, you know, the, the thing that we got to be careful of is, uh, for me, this has been a crazy week. It's been a great week. It's been exciting. It's been awesome. Lots of highs. Um, Tuesday morning, I was able to do a funeral for uh, a young lady. Uh, she was, I think, 92, passed. And good, I, I guess what the family told me, she was a, a God-fearing woman. In fact, the grandson said that at one moment she could be telling you about God, and the next minute, if you did something stupid, she'd throw a shoe at you. Uh, I was told that her favorite band was Pink Floyd, and that she would often uh, get a new pickup truck, bounce it off of a couple of things, and then get another new pickup truck. Um, but she would get, uh, she would be followed all the way home by the police. But she had the windows down and the radio so loud with Pink Floyd that she couldn't hear the police car behind her until she pulled into the driveway and turned the car off. At that point, the police officer would walk up to her and say, Ma'am, do you realize what you were doing? And she said, Nothing wrong. And the officers would not cite her because I guess she was a big advocate. She worked at a nursing home uh, up until a few years ago, so uh, worked very diligently as a volunteer. And she was, uh, she was the voice. She, in fact, she didn't ever say that they were residents. They were family. And so she kind of protected those people in that nursing home, and she would speak out for them, and she was their advocate. And so the cops were afraid because a couple of them had relatives in the nursing home they were afraid that she wouldn't be their advocate anymore so they wouldn't even give her a ticket so that was a great day and then that that evening later that night we had a young lady gave her life to christ came forward and was baptized we had a church full it was a baptism that a church service broke out into we probably had 50 plus people here we ended up having songs and a little devotional and it was just a great great night Wednesday, we had men's breakfast. I was able to uh, give a little talk. I go to the Fozzy Center the first Wednesday of the month and just meet with those folks over there. And it was nice to visit with them. And then we had Wednesday night Bible study. And then we had a wedding here yesterday. So Friday and Saturday, we're, you know, decorating the church. Well, they decorated. I didn't decorate you. I just want you to understand that I don't have that eye. Um, but it was just fun. You know, two uh, young people, uh, Christian people came to know, uh, came together as one flesh. It was just a great week. You, you would think that that would be exciting. And it was. But I found it to be challenging. And here's why. Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, I just didn't sleep. I just, my head was full. My heart was heavy. Um, I just couldn't sleep. And, and Wednesday, I found that I, I was in the church as soon as we got done with the men's breakfast. In fact, I left early because I was just burdened. And the burden was this, and it sounds crazy, but I'm sharing it with you because I want you to understand that I was burdened with, am I doing this for the glory of God or am I doing this for me? Does that make sense to you? Have you, have you ever worked so diligently for God thinking you're doing ex everything? I'm busy all the time eating bonbons and pretzels, but I try to do other things for the church. And, and sometimes I feel I have, to, I have to center. Remember last week, and I think it was my sermon talking to me, I'll be honest. Malachi just all week was just hammering on me because I, I got to the point of asking myself this question. Bill, who are you working for? Are you truly working for the glory of God? Or in your busyness, are you actually not even seeking him? And, and then it came to me that in the last couple of weeks, just with Denise being gone, uh, the dogs are getting up at 4.30 every stinking morning. I am not a 4.30 guy. Like, I'll just be honest. She needs to come home and take care of these stupid dogs. And then I realized that it's not the dog's fault because she got roosters. And I think the dogs hear the roosters and say, well, if they're outside tinkling, I need to be outside tinkling. So I, 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 
I, I broke down. I said, God, am I doing truly, am I doing it for your glory or am I doing it for mine? Now, I, I, I think I'm doing it for his glory. I'm always busy doing something. I'm calling on people and trying to, and, and the church is growing and praise God for that. But here's what I'll say. And I said it this morning and I mean this absolutely serious. If you're not growing in Jesus, don't waste your time in coming here. Because you can come here for an hour. If you're never opening that book, if you're never praying, if you're never seeking a relationship with him, you're wasting your time. Because I, I can't get you to heaven. It, it's not me. You can come here and listen to me babble. In fact, this morning we had new people teaching junior church and the challenge was dropped that I couldn't exceed my first sermon of, or my, my longest sermon was 52 minutes. And they, they were like, don't leave me in this room with these kids that long. And then, the, then somebody else threw down the gauntlet and said, I bet you you can't. So the challenge, I almost was going to go an hour this morning. But then I thought, well, for whose glory am I doing it again? See, I think the thing that I'm getting at is, is, is our sermon series is to stand firm, but for what purpose? There's been many times that I think I'm standing on the rock of Christ, but then I'm so busy doing something that it's almost like I step off the rock and I end up in quicksand. And I begin to sink and I realize that in my busyness, in all that I'm doing, I've not even asked him. I've not sought him for his counsel. I've not reached out to him and said, God, bless me in what I'm doing for you, which then means that I'm only doing it for my purpose and my glory. Today, I want us to look at the scripture from Paul as he's talking to the church in Philippi about standing firm in your faith, standing firm in what you believe to be true, in reaching out to God and asking for his blessing in your service to him. Because if you're not seeking his counsel and, and his encouragement and his strength, then guess who you're doing it for? You're actually doing it for yourself. And I, I caught myself this week. This week I spent Wednesday morning after, after men's breakfast sitting right on this pew, weeping, asking this question. God, am I doing this to glorify you or am I doing it to glorify me? God, am I doing this to glorify you or am I doing this to grow the church? And that's why I say I don't care how big we get. I really don't. What I pray every week is for you to grow in Him. Not numbers here, not pews being filled, but for you to grow in Him. See, that's my job. My job's not to fill a church. My job is to fill you with Him. Today, my question will be this. I always ask a question because I've got to make you think, and if I'm going to be pondering it all week, you ought to be too, is are you growing in Christ? Are you remaining firm in the gospel or are you simply coming here to put in what you believe to be your christian uh, uh requirement of one hour a week because i can tell you now it's not enough it's not enough abraham lincoln once said this he said be uh, be sure to put your feet on the right place and then stand firm are you standing on the word of Christ? Are you living in the spirit of Christ? Or are you simply saying that and living in the quicksand that's right next to your rock? Are you professing the name of Jesus with your eyes, with your ears, with your mouth, with your actions, with all that you are? See, we are, when we gave our life to Christ, we said, Christ, I give you everything. I give you all things. Or are you simply going through the motions of what you believe now our new world's idea of a Christian should be? We can look at all these examples of the prophets in the Old Testament and those in the Old Testament, those in the New Testament, and I wonder how many of us truly look like those people of the Bible. Because they prayed all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean all the time. Christians nowadays very often don't pray days or weeks at a time. Many Christians today don't even know where their Bible is, let alone open it. And you could tell me, well, I have it on my phone. I don't care. If you're not looking at it, you're not reading it, it doesn't count. 
you could have 400 Bible apps on your phone and that's only going to make you look good at somebody that walks past you and goes, wow, look at all those Bible apps. You must be a really strong Christian. Oh, absolutely. I get the Bible verse of the day every day. You read one verse. Yep, I read my Bible verse of the day. My question is, is are you giving God His due glory in order to be His children? Or are you standing in the quicksand? If you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to start in Philippians today. We're going to be in chapter uh, 1, starting in verse 21. And I want you to look at these verses or these words that Paul put on paper to encourage the church of Philippi. And I want you to take these as words for you today. For me to live... For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I am to live on in the flesh, now he's not talking about fleshly things, he's talking about being human, living on this earth. This will mean fruitful labor for me. <clears throat> and I do not know which to choose. But I am hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better, yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. I, I want you to think about that. You know, as, as a Christian, we should long to be in heaven. We should desire to be in heaven. I'll be honest, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. The way I understand heaven, the dogs won't wake me up at 4.30 again. I won't hear the rooster crow ever again. I won't get pulled in 4,000 different directions by phone calls and texts. I won't get so caught up in what I feel to be doing God's work that I forget who God is. Because I'll be in the presence of God. I'll be in the presence of Jesus. I'll be walking on the streets of gold. I'll dip down and I'll take a big drink out of the river of, the, the, of life. And not have to worry about if a fish pooped in it. Ew. I'll, I'll take fruit off the tree of life. I'll, I'll eat the leaves that are healing for all the nations. I'll be in the glory of God. I mean, stop and think about that. I love all of you, and I said it a million times, but I feel like, Paul, I long to be there. I long to wake up and not be sore ever again. I long to be in a place that I don't have to worry about evil. I don't have to worry about sinning or doing something stupid. But I know until my name is written in that book of life, I will be here. And that means in order to glorify God, I need to be in God, just like I would there. The difference is here, it's my choice. When I get up in the morning, do I choose God first? Do I choose to be Jesus? Do I choose to make my decisions based on biblical things? And, and the reason I say that is because there's a lot of religions out there, and a lot of them are getting very, very perverse and away from the Bible. We, we belong to the Christian church. It started back around 18, I think it was 46. Stone and Campbell, two pastors came together and they go, there's all these religions and there's all these man-made laws. Let's get back to the Bible. Let's know the Bible. Let's understand the Bible. And let's base our life on the Bible. Not on this rule or that rule of the church. It is on the Bible only. That's why you often hear in the Christian church, where the Bible speaks, we speak. Where the Bible is silent, we are silent. If it ain't in the Bible, I ain't going to walk up to you and tell you what you're doing is wrong. I may not like it. I may not agree with it. But if I can't back it up by Jesus, then it's my own personal opinion. And if I tell you you're doing wrong, then I have made myself God to judge you. See, if I don't know what's in this book, then I am not a very good child of God. A child of God would know the God, his father. My kids know me. They know every look I have. And they know when dad ain't happy. They know when dad is happy. They know when they should go to their room or they can come into the room. They know <clears throat> means something and it ain't good. <laughs> Why? Because my children know me. My question is, as a child of God, do you know your father? And the only way you're going to know him is by this book. 
The only way you're going to know Him is literally spending time with Him. And maybe grieving if you need to. Because I'll tell you what, it was tough Wednesday morning. But I have never felt more the presence of God than when I'm here and I'm exposing myself. God, am I doing this for your glory or am I doing it for, for myself? Am I doing it for the name of Virgie? God, center me. Remember, that was my key last week with Malachi. Center yourself on Jesus. And I, I did. I, I went through probably a half a box, almost full box Kleenex because I was just so grieved. And you know why? Because the Spirit held me accountable. When was the last time you got down truly on your hands and knees or sat down in the presence of God the Father and poured your heart out and sought Him? See, in order to stand firm on the Word of God, in order to stand firm on the Holy Spirit, you have to know it. You have to know them. Paul is, he's solid, right? He's rock solid, yet he's grieving. Like, I want to be there. I want to be away. I want to be apart from this world. It's getting crazy here, God. I, I just, I'm, um, but as long as you have me here, I will remain firm knowing that you are in me, through me, with me, around me, and my decisions will be based on you being in me and through me and around me. When people look at me, I pray they see you. And I pray that they come to know you. I pray they don't see me. I pray all week long, as Paul did, that you don't hear my words. He yeah, has some of the quirky things, I guess, are mine. But for the most part, I want you to hear the word of God. But here's the thing. This hour ain't getting you to heaven. This does. The blood of Jesus does. Putting your full faith, your full hope in Jesus does. Paul goes on to say, Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that your proud confidence in me may abound in Christ Jesus through my coming to you again. Paul talking about how he's wanting, he's yearning to get back to the Philippi church, but he doesn't know. Why? Well, he's caught up, he's been imprisoned, he's been tortured, he's been beaten. Oh, but then he gives us these words, but only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel in no way alarmed by your opponents which is a sign of destruction for them but salvation for you and that too from God conduct yourselves worthy of a manner of the gospel of Christ let, let that sink in conduct yourselves worthy of a manner of Jesus Christ. Are you acting like Jesus Christ to the world? Are you being Jesus to the world? Or are you simply going through the motions of what you think to be Western Christianity? Where the Bible speaks, I will speak. Where the Bible is silent, I will be silent. So today I'm speaking this. Are you walking, striving, desiring, pushing to be Jesus? And to be His gospel? Because if you want to look at the world, it's going to hell. Just being honest. It's getting crazy out there. No different than it was in Paul's time. Jesus said, go and be me. Show people me. Bring people to me. And you know how you do that? you got to be in Him to be Him. You cannot go into a dark place and be the light of the world if your light has dimmed or burned out because you don't know your God. If you don't know your Father. 
If you don't know the one who saved you. See, we got to be in this word all the time. We need a relationship with him that is so intimate that we feel his presence. And I'll be honest, as much as I pray all the time and I do all the time and I strive all the time, I fear that many times I have lost sight of who I'm truly doing it for. Today, I encourage you to know your dad, to know your father in heaven, to understand what he's asking of you, what he's calling you to do. Because I guarantee if you ain't spending time with him, he's up there going, Uh, wake up, people. Bill, Bill, uh, you and me, we need a little time. We need a little chat. See, I think too many times we rely on what we think we know compared to what we ought to really know. And that is Jesus. We could say we know Him. But do we? Because if you're not spending time with Him, I guarantee you are not standing on something firm. You're standing on something that's quivering and shaking. And you're sinking in the quicksand. Paul goes on to say, conduct yourself worthy of the manner of the gospel of Christ so that, whether he comes to be with them or not, you are standing firm in one spirit, one mind, striving for the faith of the gospel. And what's our blessing from that? For salvation. If you're not striving to know Jesus, if you're not striving to know his dad, if you're not striving to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then you're not striving for your own salvation. You're striving for your own glory. And that is not beneficial for anyone. You or the people you come in contact with. So how do we stand firm? How how, how do we? Well, I can tell you this. This week I remembered something that I hadn't thought about in a long time. It's grieving your sin. It is grieving and letting go and truly just asking Jesus to fill you. Asking the Spirit to come upon you and fill you. It's asking God to take away the burdens of this world. See, when we, when we become burdenless, which I know it seems and sounds impossible, but when we get rid of those burdens that hold us down, we then can pro- proclaim the name of Christ and help someone else with their burdens. See, I, I think what my problem has been lately is I've been trying to take burdens from everyone else. And instead of taking them and handing them off, I've just taken them. And it only weighs you down. It only weighed me down. And I needed my time with Jesus. And I haven't, I haven't made that time. You ever, you ever think of it this way? Sometimes you have to make time for God. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? Like, I have to make time for him? L- let me ask you this. In, in your days that you have, how many of you are often busy from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed? Always something. You get up, you slam a cup of coffee, and you got to go to work, or you got to go here, or you got to go there. You get home, and now you got to do the housework, and now you got to do the chores, and now you got to now you got to mow the lawn because with a little bit of rain, you get grass is going to be four foot high before you know it. Well, then you can't just you can't just mow because now you got a weed whip because you know the 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 mailbox looks weird with all that grass around it. Well, you can't just get done with the weed whipping because then you know you got to go to the garden and pull the weeds. And then you got to, and, and then you, and, and then, and, 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 and the next thing you know, you're exhausted. Oh, I'm just so tired. What a full day I've had. And the whole time God's sitting upstairs going, but what about me? Well, why, why, why didn't you make time for me? Why didn't you at least say, hey, God, thanks for the grass I'm mowing. Hey, hey, why didn't you say while you're weeding the garden, God, thank you for that beautiful looking tomato plant. I can't wait to eat the fruit off that. It's going to be wonderful. BLTs are coming. Uh, Favorite part of the summer. 
See, we get so busy and caught up in the world thinking we're doing what's right. And the biggest thing you can do in right is know Jesus and know him intimately. See, you could go on and I, I, I could go on and get my doctorate and maybe heal cancer. What does it gain me? Nothing, because I'm still going to die. The people that I may heal through my knowledge may still die. Well, we're all going to die. So what's the greatest gift I can give somebody? Is Jesus, because Jesus offers eternal life. But how, how can I go about that? Well, Paul just said it. Live in a way worthy of the gospel of Jesus. If you want to give Jesus somebody, you need to know and you need to be Jesus to them. Paul doesn't call us to sit around. I, I think of that woman on, on Tuesday. I think she was 92 and she had still been working at the nursing home up until uh, just a couple years before that. 90 years old, still going to the nursing home. 90 years old, still fighting for the residents, the family at the nursing home. She was being Jesus the, who those who didn't know him. I don't care if you're 10, I don't care if you're 110, there is work to be done. If nothing else, the work is in your household. Kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, all of us need encouragement. When I was sitting here the other day, just beside myself, weeping, literally weeping, I had two elders come into this church and pray with me. You ever feel burdened and wore out? Call the elders. Call me. You don't have to do it alone. See, Jesus calls us to be in community. That's why you're here right now. If not, I'm sure there's a lot of other things you could have done Sunday morning. Paul says, walk in a worthy, man a worthy manner of the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel of Christ? The life of Christ. Are we being Jesus? Paul doesn't stop there, though. He keeps going. Um, Chapter 2 begins this way. He says, therefore, you know how I love therefores and buts in the Bible. It says, therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Then Paul throws in these words that cut me to the quick. Kind of what I told you, the whole reason I was weeping on Wednesday. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but in humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which also were in Christ Jesus, who though although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow. For those who are in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, anywhere in the galaxy, it doesn't matter, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What are we to do? Empty ourselves. We are called to be in the manner and worthiness of the gospel of Jesus. What did Jesus do? He denied himself to the glory of God the Father. He emptied himself of his godship, of his lordship, to become human, to become just like us for his Father's glory. He then went to the cross for the glory of God the Father to bring all of us home so that one day we can be like Paul going, man, I can't wait to get there, but while I'm here, I'm kicking Satan's butt. I'm working for the Lord because I know that He is in me and through me and around me. He is giving me His power. He is giving me His strength. He is giving me His encouragement. 
and with Christ in me, nothing can stop me. I can do, and I hate the verse, but I love the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You know what? I can. I can't go lift my van, but I can lift someone's broken soul to see Jesus. I can live, whether it be with my wife making a good meal or ramen noodles. I can do what God, what Christ has called me to do for him, through him, and with him. But here's what I found. Again, and it, I'm not smart. It takes me often to remember this. I cannot do it on my own. I can think all day long. I can make all these phone calls. I can pray with all these people. I can encourage all these people. But if I'm not seeking Him, then I'm only doing it to hear myself talk as, what is it called? A ringing gong, as the Pharisees did. See, I need to know Jesus in order to be Jesus. I need to commune with Jesus in order to show Jesus. I need to read Jesus in order to love and show compassion. What were those words at the beginning of the chapter? Encouragement in Christ, consolation of love, fellowship of the Spirit, affection, compassion, being joyful, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. You want to stand firm? You better know Jesus. You better be standing on the rock of Christ. Because when you step off that rock, even if you think what you're doing is for him, but you have not included him, you're probably doing it for your own glory. And I'm just being honest. I'm admitting this. I'm pouring my heart out to you today because I think I was getting to the point of that. And God said, oh no, you're not. Oh no. I will bring you back to me. And I needed that. I needed to be centered. I needed to be grounded in Christ Jesus. Today, my encouragement or my question to you is, is what rock are you standing on? Are you truly standing on the rock of your salvation? Or is that a guise for you and you're actually floating on a log that's spinning in turbulent waters? Because here's what I would encourage you to do. Empty yourself. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you own. I don't care how you look. I don't care anything of this world that you think you have accomplished. You are nothing without Christ. Empty yourself and become humble as Christ became humble to the death of the cross. We are to emulate Christ in all things, not just the things we like. Well, Jesus was a really good speaker. I want to be a really good speaker. Yeah, and he died on a cross. You ready? See, if we're not ready to do everything that Christ did, then we don't know our Father. And that means standing up to people. Not, I'm not saying fight. I'm not saying argue. Peter says we need to be ready to give an account of our Christianity, a testimony to those who need to hear it. Are we ready? doesn't matter if you're at Strax or the gas station. You are Jesus to those who see you. You know, it's really hard to be Jesus if you don't know Jesus. Today, I encourage you, find Jesus in your life. Cry out to Christ and ask him to remove you for more of him. All of him. Because what you're doing right now, or at least what I was doing, as much as I thought it was for God's glory, I wasn't even asking Him. So it was mine. And I'm asking you for your forgiveness in that. Worship God. Praise Jesus. Follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Trinity that has created all things loves you that much, and he's offering all of that to you today. First thing you need to do is empty yourself. Fill yourself with the Spirit. Fill yourself with the Word of God. Fill yourself with the love of Christ. 
and love a broken and lost world. Because guess what? This world needs love. It doesn't need judgment. Judgment's coming. It needs to see Jesus. Bruno of Cologni. Did I put you all to sleep, really? It, in Whiting, we call that Cologni. Um, no. Bruno of Cologne once said this, while the world changes, the cross stands firm. You cannot be wishy-washy in what you believe. You're just like the world. Today, stand firm on the rock of Christ that he is glorified and that picture of heaven becomes oh so much clearer because one day we'll be like Paul maybe even today I long to be there I long to be with Jesus but while I am here I will take as many people with me through the glory of Christ Jesus to be in that same place Where are you standing? On a rock? On a log in the middle of a turbulent wind? Or on quicksand? Father, today we just praise you for these words. We thank you, Father, for this challenge that Paul gave the church in Philippi that still rings true today. Are we walking in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus? Or are we being tossed about? Are are we being confused by what the world has to offer and what you have to offer? Father, are we truly, truly emptying ourselves in order to be filled with you? Are we even seeking your counsel? Are we spending any time with you? Father, I pray today that everyone here would walk out being filled with the Spirit of God that everyone here would walk out knowing that there is darkness in the world and the only way that darkness can flee or change is the light of Christ, which we are and carry in us. Father, today I pray that we would just seek you, that we would be grieved by the things that we ought not to do, the sins in our life, the things that that hold us back, and that we would... Seek you, Father, in your righteousness. Today, Father, I pray that you would place upon us the burden of getting ready or getting rid of all of that, that we would just be ready to be with you. Father, we love you. We thank you, Father, for for all that you do your willingness to be right here with us right now, to be in us and around us and through us. Father, help us to use that and to tap into that and to know you. Forgive us when we don't make time for you. Father, take us off the the weak ground, the quicksand, and help us stand firm on the name of Jesus. We ask this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen.